the test tube containing solid salts P. We note that solid salt P is a white solid. We will heat gently with a close with a closed with the air hole closed. The question tells us to test with a gluing splint, so we will get ready the gluing splint. Now I open the air hole to get a strong flame. We will always place the test tube at the tip of the small blue triangle. So we will have to pay attention to the changes going on in the tube. The solid salt P has melted to form a colorless solution, a colorless liquid. And then we insert the glowing spin. Colorless liquid at the same time. Uh, we will pay attention to it. We see bubbles bubbling and the colorless liquid is now changing color. Colorless liquid is now becoming yellow and the glowing spin relax. We also note that there are water droplets at the sides of the test tube. All these observations should be noted down in your master scripts. So that's a positive test for the glowing spin. Which of course leads us to conclude that oxygen gas must have been given off. Notice that when I place the gluing spin into the tube, uh, the gluing spin does not touch the sides of the test tube. You've got to be careful uh, and you carry out the experiment. Next, we move on to salt, solid salt cube in another test tube. We will repeat the experiment. We will heat it first gently, later, then later more strongly. All, all the while, we will be placing the test tube at the tip of the small bowl triangle, the hottest part of the flame. So, similarly, as we do the like the glowing spin test, we still pay attention to the changes going on in the tube. We again notice uh, this time we do not see water water droplets. We see white fumes appearing. We also see white uh, solid condensing at the sides of the test tube. So we will note that down in our answers. Uh, because of the white solid that is uh, condensed at the side of the test tube, it's harder to see the glowing spin test, but still we will try our best to observe to see if it relights, but it does not. So it's a negative test now for the glowing spin. So you should pay close attention to uh, the solid to see if there's any other changes. So there's white fumes quite solid condensing at the sides of the test tube. At the same time, the, there's a white solid that will remain in the test tube. So that this is the so this is the result of part A. Next we move on to part B where we will use the solution P we take 1 cubic centimeters of solution P put into a large test tube. We will add 1 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide. We do not add excess. The question tells us to gently warm and then test for any gas using litmus. So, if you have read the instructions which you should uh, have before you started doing, you realize that um, you whatever you do for P, you got to repeat for Q and R. That means that you would have to use quite a bit of blue and blue and red demons paper so you want to get ready, get them ready on a on a bench and all, remember that when you use blue and red demons you always have to dampen them before it test so you get all these things ready before you start heating so it's important to think ahead when you're doing the practical exam so you will test you will notice that uh, when i place the blue and red demons at the mouth of the body tube the papers do not touch the boiling tube at all because you want to ensure that if there should be a change to the blue or red litmus is entirely due to the gas and not due to any solution that you have added uh, that may be at the sides of the boiling tube. 
So we realize that we have added sodium hydroxide and we are warming it and we notice and we realize this is the test for ammonium ion. We are actually finding out if ammonia gas is given off if the red litmus paper will turn blue. So this is negative. Blue litmus paper remains. Then blue litmus paper remains. Then red litmus paper remains. Next, we add aluminium foil. So, if, if you look at it carefully, what we are doing now is we have added sodium hydroxide, we have warm, and then now we are adding aluminium foil. This is now a test for the nitrate ion. You need to ensure that the aluminium foil uh, is mixed, is inside the solution. So it, does, it doesn't fall off, just push it in. Then, you will still test with red and blue litmus. Remember, to again dampen it, dampen both the red and blue litmus. You are still testing for the release of ammonia gas, but this time if you should get a positive test, then you are going to conclude that nitrate ion is present in the solution. If the solution bubbles too vigorously, you will do what I did, what I'm doing now, which is to move the test, the boiling tube away from the flame. But do not stop testing for the gas. Continue to leave the limus there, and there you see the blue limus remains, the damp red limus turns blue. So that's a positive test for the nitrate ion. Still on solution P, we are going on to part C. 1 cubic centimeters of P in the test tube, and we are going to continue to add 1 cubic centimeters of silver nit of nitrate acid first before we add. Silver nitrate. Silver nitrate, of course, is the test for chloride ion. So we are on the lookout for a white PPT. Colorless solution remains. That will be our observation for this part. Then we add 1 cubic centimeters of aqueous ammonia. Always mix colorless solution remains. Next, we go on to part D. 1 cubic centimeters of solution P now. Still on solution P, the last part, part D now. And then we will add 1 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid. Next, we add 1 cubic centimeters of barium chloride. Barium chloride will be the test, the reagent to test for sulfate ion. Colorless solution remains. Next, we will repeat for solution Q. We will of course uh, have to use a clean dropper, so you should be provided with another dropper which you will use solely for solution cube. We have to ensure that uh, we do not contaminate our samples so that we get the correct results that can allow us to draw correct conclusions. So you have a boiling tube, put 1 cubic centimeters of Q in the boiling tube, then we will add 1 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide and then we will get ready our litmus, yes, red and blue, and then we will warm. Dampen the red and blue litmus, always dampen the red and blue litmus, and then we will start warming. We Again, we are now <coughs> aware that we are testing for the ammonium ion, because we added sodium hydroxide and we are warming. We are particularly interested in the damp red litmus to see if it does turn blue. If it does, we conclude ammonium ion is present. So the damp red litmus paper does turn blue, blue litmus remains. All these observations should be noted down in our scripts. Then we go on to add aluminum foil. Okay, now we are aware that we are testing for nitrate. Okay, there may be a little bit of um, Uh, confusion here because if ammonia gas was given off, it is, is there's a chance that the ammonia gas is con continuously given off, still being given off right now. So now, if you were to get a positive test for ammonia gas, it may not necessarily mean that nitrate is present. It could be the ammonia gas that was from the previous part that was due to the ammonia mother, right? So this will affect the conclusions that uh, 
you will have to draw later. So anyhow, you write down whatever you see, and later when you do a conclusion, you will try to make sense of what observations you have made. Going on, we are going on to part C. Uh, one cubic centimeters of Q now in the test tube, followed by one cubic centimeters of nitric acid. Then silver chloride. We are again testing for chloride. Ion. We are on the lookout for part PPT, which we do, which we do get positive test. So part D. Uh, still on part C, the equals ammonia. So I add equals ammonia. I want to see if the white PPT is soluble in excess, and it is. White PPT is soluble in excess equals ammonia. This is R. So another test tube, another dew dropper. One cubic centimeters of R now in a large test tube. Uh, one cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide, and then warm. Before that, we get ready our red and blue limits. So always plan ahead. Always think ahead before you carry out the steps, especially when you are testing for gases. You want to be ready, be testing for the gas when it is given off, not when most of them have already escaped. So they always dampen the blue and red litmus and then leave, put the red and blue litmus at the mouth of the tubes, make sure it does not touch the tube. Make sure it's in the air. Okay, move the tubes away when the bubbling gets bigger. So our damp red litmus paper turns blue, blue litmus remains. So that's a positive test for ammonium ion. Then we will add aluminum foil. So there is the same confusion as we would, uh, that may happen as with Q. Because the ammonia gas that is due to the ammonium ion could still be being given off right now. So you are likely to get a positive test for the red limits now. But it may not be due to the, the nitrate ion that is present. So then red limits turns blue. Next, we go on to part C. One cubic centimeters of P in the test tube. One cubic centimeters of dilute nitrate acid. Always mix, shake and mix. One cubic centimeters of silver nitrate. Colorless solution remains, and we will add so the uh, equals ammonia colorless solution remains. Last part one cubic centimeters of R in the test tube, one cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid, and then one cubic centimeters of barium chloride. We are looking for 5 PPT, negative colorless solution remains.